Welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be exploring an interesting topic that sheds light on the relationship between Africa and Europe. We will be discussing the 10 African nations that restrict the export of raw materials to Europe. Join us as we delve into the reasons behind these restrictions and the potential impacts on both continents. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest news and analysis. Number 10, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has a long history of exporting raw materials to Europe. The country is rich in minerals such as chrome, gold, platinum, and lithium. In recent years, Zimbabwe has begun to restrict exports of some raw materials to Europe. In 2022, Zimbabwe banned the export of raw chrome or N chrome concentrates. The government said that the ban was necessary to encourage the development of a domestic ferrochrome industry. There are several reasons why Zimbabwe is restricting exports of raw materials to Europe. One reason is to encourage the development of domestic downstream processing industries. By processing raw materials domestically, Zimbabwe can create jobs and boost economic growth. Another reason for the restrictions is to increase government revenue. Export taxes on raw materials can generate significant revenue for the government. Finally, the restrictions are also aimed at protecting the environment. Some mining processes can damage the environment, and the restrictions are designed to reduce the amount of mining activity that takes place. The restrictions on exports of raw materials to Europe have had a mixed impact on the Zimbabwean economy. On the one hand, the restrictions have led to higher prices for raw materials, which has benefited miners and the government. On the other hand, the restrictions have made it more difficult for manufacturers to access the raw materials they need, which has led to higher prices for manufactured goods and has made Zimbabwean manufacturers less competitive in the global market. Number 9, South Africa. South Africa has a long history of exporting raw materials to Europe, dating back to the colonial era. In the early days of European colonialism, South Africa was a major source of gold and diamonds. In the 19th and 20th centuries, South Africa also became a major exporter of other raw materials, such as coal, iron ore, and manganese. The restrictions on the export of raw materials from South Africa to Europe have had several consequences. On the one hand, the restrictions have made it more difficult for European companies to access the raw materials they need. This has led to higher prices for raw materials and has made European companies less competitive in the global market. On the other hand, the restrictions have encouraged European companies to invest in downstream processing industries in South Africa. This has created jobs and boosted economic growth in South Africa and has also reduced Europe's reliance on imports of processed raw materials. Number 8. Nigeria. Nigeria is a country located in West Africa. It is the most populous country in Africa and the seventh most populous country in the world. Nigeria is a major exporter of oil, gas, and agricultural products. Nigeria has a long history of restricting the export of raw materials to Europe. This dates back to the colonial era when the British colonial government imposed restrictions on the export of certain raw materials to protect British industries. After independence in 1960, the Nigerian government continued to impose restrictions on the export of raw materials. This was done to encourage the development of domestic downstream processing industries. Number 7, Namibia. Namibia is a country in southwestern Africa. It is bordered by Angola to the north, Zambia to the northeast, Botswana to the east and south, and South Africa to the south. Namibia gained its independence from South Africa in 1990. Namibia is a mineral-rich country, with significant deposits of diamonds, copper, gold, lead, zinc, and uranium. The Namibian government's restrictions on the export of raw materials to Europe have several objectives. First, the government wants to encourage the development of domestic downstream processing industries. This would create jobs and boost economic growth in Namibia. Second, the government wants to increase government revenue. The export taxes on raw materials generate significant revenue for the government. Third, the government wants to protect the environment. Some of the mining processes used to extract raw materials can damage the environment. The export restrictions help to reduce the amount of mining activity that takes place. Finally, the government wants to conserve strategic resources. Some raw materials, such as uranium, are essential for national security and development. The export restrictions help to ensure that these resources are available for domestic use. Number 6, Guinea. Guinea is a West African country with a long and rich history. 
The country is home to a diverse population of over 13 million people and has been inhabited for over 2,500 years. Guinea is also a resource-rich country, with abundant reserves of bauxite, iron ore, gold, and diamonds. The restrictions on exports of raw materials to Europe have had a mixed impact on Guinea. On the one hand, the restrictions have generated revenue for the government and have helped to create jobs in the mining sector. On the other hand, the restrictions have made it more difficult for Guinea to attract foreign investment in the mining sector and have reduced the country's export earnings. The restrictions on exports of raw materials to Europe have also had an impact on European companies. The restrictions have made it more difficult for European companies to access the raw materials they need, and have led to higher prices for raw materials. This has made European companies less competitive in the global market. Number 5. Ghana. The restrictions on exports of raw materials to Europe have had a mixed impact on the Ghanaian economy. On the one hand, the restrictions have reduced the amount of foreign exchange that Ghana earns from exports. On the other hand, the restrictions have encouraged the development of domestic downstream processing industries. The development of these industries has created jobs and boosted economic growth in Ghana. The restrictions on exports of raw materials to Europe have also had an impact on European companies. The restrictions have made it more difficult for European companies to access the raw materials they need. This has led to higher prices for raw materials and has made European companies less competitive in the global market. Number 4. Ethiopia. Ethiopia restricts exports of raw materials to Europe in several ways. One way is through export taxes. Ethiopia has high export taxes on several raw materials, including coffee, oilseeds, and hides and skins. These export taxes make it more expensive for European companies to import raw materials from Ethiopia. Another way that Ethiopia restricts exports of raw materials to Europe is through export licensing. Ethiopia requires exporters to obtain a license before they can export certain raw materials. The government can use this licensing system to control the volume of exports and to ensure that exporters are meeting certain requirements. Number 3. Democratic Republic of Congo. The Democratic Republic of Congo restricts the export of raw materials to Europe in several ways. One way is through export taxes. The Democratic Republic of Congo imposes high export taxes on certain raw materials, such as cobalt and copper. This makes it more expensive for European companies to import these materials from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Another way that the Democratic Republic of Congo restricts the export of raw materials to Europe is through licensing requirements. The Democratic Republic of Congo government requires companies to obtain a license before they can export certain raw materials. This process can be lengthy and bureaucratic, and it can be difficult for companies to obtain the necessary licenses. Number 2. Botswana. Botswana restricts the export of raw materials to Europe in several ways. First, Botswana imposes export taxes on raw materials. These taxes make it more expensive to export raw materials and encourage companies to process the materials domestically. Second, Botswana has several domestic processing requirements for raw materials. For example, companies that mine diamonds in Botswana must process the diamonds domestically before they can be exported. This requirement helps to create jobs and boost the domestic economy. Third, Botswana has several joint ventures with foreign companies to develop domestic processing industries. For example, Botswana has a joint venture with De Beers to process diamonds domestically. This joint venture has helped to make Botswana one of the world's leading diamond producers. Number 1. Algeria. The impact of these export restrictions on Europe is mixed. On the one hand, the restrictions can make it more difficult for European companies to access the raw materials they need. This can lead to higher prices for raw materials and can make European companies less competitive in the global market. On the other hand, the restrictions can encourage European companies to invest in downstream processing industries in Algeria. This can create jobs and boost economic growth in Algeria and can also reduce Europe's reliance on imports of processed raw materials. Overall, the export restrictions imposed by Algeria on raw materials are a complex issue with both positive and negative impacts. It is important to weigh the costs and benefits of these restrictions carefully when considering their impact on both Algeria and Europe. Thank you for watching our coverage of the 10 African nations that restrict the export of raw materials to Europe. This topic highlights the complexities of international trade and resource management between Africa and Europe.
Stay connected with our YouTube channel for more informative videos, insightful analysis, and thought-provoking discussions. Don't miss out on our upcoming content by subscribing and turning on the notification bell. We appreciate your engagement, so please share your thoughts, questions, and suggestions in the comments section below. Let's continue to explore the dynamics of global trade and foster meaningful conversations in our diverse community.